Hi, I'm Steve Hargadon, and we're in the final stretch of the Library 2.0 and 2 conference. Uh, some of us have been up for over 35 hours. This has really been a blast. We've had a tremendous Yes, very good. Thanks okay, to our right. thanks to our sponsors and supporters. San Jose State University is the This is your chance to let us know where you're participating from. Look for the star to the left of the map. It's the second icon down. Click on it twice and click on the map. Looks like New Zealand. I'm in Park City, Utah. Moreno is in Rio de Janeiro. Feel free to let us know the weather, the time, the temperature. Yeah, in Rio it's, it's really hot here. It's really hot. It's been really hot and, and dry. Unusually dry or just normally dry for this season? No, it's, it's, it's very abnormal. It's, it's, uh, usually it's by the time of this year uh, it's, it should be rainy, but it's really dry and it's not, it's not, it doesn't look good. It's raining a lot in some of the regions and, and being really dry on others. Interesting. We're experiencing some it's, of the it's, same. It's really the global warming, it's, it's taking a, a effect here. Okay, we're really delighted to have you here. I'm going to turn the time over to you. And we do need to finish at the top of the hour because we have sessions to start right after yours. Okay, all right. Try to be just as brief as I can. Okay, so um, I just I just wanted to thank Steve for the, the opportunity. I just uh, it's been amazing to be uh, part of this conference. I've been following the the sessions of uh, the last couple of days, and uh, I am just be just happy to be part of this and. Uh, uh, I want to thank Steve and and for having this uh, letting me just uh, represent Brazil in a, in some kind of way. I I feel kind of proud, and uh, I just want to give you a few a few just present a few points and give you a perspective on how I see things going on in Brazil right now um, related to to libraries and, and our work and and everything. But uh, just to to start off. Um, I wanted to. Uh, I hope you forgive for my forgive me for my my English. It's it's a bit rusty. It's not my first language, as you may already figured. And uh, just wanted to 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 talk about myself just a little. I, I work for the University of Rio. Uh, I also teach for, uh, at the library school here in in Rio too, in another university. And uh, I've been doing some some work with the national system of public libraries here. And uh, I ran some. I, I, I used to run uh, some blogs on, on on the field and just trying to connect as much as possible to my colleagues, librarians, and and, and all that, giving uh, lectures and 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 workshops around the country. So it's 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 about it. And uh, uh, so let's do it. Uh, I was thinking about to just give you um, this. I, I don't know if is this too much of uh, uh, optimistic and uh, enthusiastic view of Brazil, just to, to try to, to to talk about what Brazil has to offer to the world. And uh, you probably hear in the in the news lately that Brazil is in the kind of a busy times um, right now. We are hosting the football World Cup. Uh, in 2014, and the city of Rio is hosting the the Summer Olympic Games, two major uh, big sports events, and everybody here is, is talking about it and living uh, about it. Make sure that the the government does the right thing just to to meet the the requirements, and uh, people is is very enthusiastic about it. Rio, the city of Rio, was chosen by UNESCO as a World Heritage Heritage Site. Which is it's is just cool. It's amazing to have this, this title. Brazil is the sixth economy of the world right now, and we have been in a steady economic growth for 
since uh, the last the past decade or so. Uh, rising living standards, um, the lower classes are coming up very strong, and we're bridging the gap uh, uh, in between the 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 low class, the lower classes and the upper classes. Uh, Brazil is the B on, on BRIC, the so-called group uh, um, of the emerging countries, the economy emerging countries, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. So this is the, just a, an overview of Brazil as a, as a whole, but I wanted to just focus on a few points um, um, related not only to technology but library, and uh, I just wanted to, to to say a few things about uh, connectivity and internet usage um, in, from the part of Brazilians here. Um, you may not know, but Brazil has the the, the world's second number of Facebook users, uh, only behind US. We have more than I think 50 million. Um, um, Brazilians on Facebook. So yeah, we're called the plague because uh, we, we plague everything that that is social network related. There are a lot of Brazilians there, and uh, um, I, I I know that a few Americans just call us the the plague, and it's it's kind of funny that the, the people see us this way because we're we're very loud, and uh, that's how we are. And uh, Brazil has more cell phone lines than than people living. I mean, it's, it's just an amazing account because uh, we have uh, just more uh, mobile lines for for the number of habitants, um, which is very unusual. And uh, Brazilians also spend more time online uh, on social networks than any other country. Uh, you can see the, the stats on on Nielsen and Comscore, all the major uh, stat counters in the world, they'll just put Brazilian somewhere in the in the upper class of, of high usage and uh, the ability just to, to, to be on all the, the social networks. I'll explain later uh, the difference between the usage uh, from the people in their upper classes and the lower classes and how libraries are, are getting there just to, to bridge this gap and uh, I'll show a, a, a few things about connectivity later. So let's just move to, uh, I picked a, a few points that I wanted to talk about. Um, I just chose a few things that I think the, that would be inter interesting for you in, in some kind of way to learn about um, Brazil, the stuff that, that's been going on here, the stuff that we're, we're building and doing and not only related to library, but to reading and, and books and everything. Um, I just, I, I'm not uh, really following the, the chat, but if I have any, any questions, just, just put in the chat and, and, or maybe I can just uh, give you my contacts and we may explore any more uh, things that you want to learn in Brazil and then uh, I might not say tonight here. But um, let's go, uh, I just put uh, like a list, I pick a list of things that I wanted to, to share with you. And uh, let's just start with the boom in the library buildings. Uh, it's, we're seeing a lot of new library buildings um, coming up. Uh, it's been amazing how in the last, uh, in the last years, uh, the past years, we've been seeing a lot of uh, new libraries coming up from from scratch, and uh, in my view, it's like it's it's been a way for the politicians to self-promote, and uh, I think they just learned that to 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 open libraries, new brand new libraries, it's a very smart way to to make people think um, good of them, like they're doing a giving us a gift, and uh, it's it's a bit, uh, let's say, funny. Um, and the problem that librarians face is just uh, they struggle to sustain the libraries, the, those new, brand new libraries, after they're opened. So it's like the, the politicians make a lot of effort to just build those libraries and to give those brand new libraries to the people. But like after a year, they just leave the, the library so they, the libra librarians have to, to just do everything to keep the library running and chase the fundings and everything like that. Just pretty much running the libraries on their on their own um, administration uh, skills. And uh, but on the other side, I think it's it's pretty uh, good that we're having this library boom 
it's it's amazing that we have the ch we're having the chance to see a lot of libraries coming up, and uh, we're trying to bridge the geographical gaps because you know Brazil is a very large country, and uh, most libraries are, are concentrated on the southeast region, on the most uh, richest um, cities like São Paulo and Rio. But since the country is so big, there there is a, a huge uh, lack of libraries in in some uh, far uh, west com uh, states and uh, the building of new libraries trying to to bridge this gap, which I think it's it's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm talking mostly about public libraries. Um, and uh, anyway, but I think it's just a, a fresh air for for the users to have those new places that they can just use as a social space and public spaces. It's, it, there is no denial that we have to celebrate the fact that we're having those, those new libraries in, in the, the major cities. Um, to me, uh, I think that the changing in the arch, uh, architecture aspect, it's, it's very important because uh, I see that most libraries there, we still have libraries that look like they, they are stuck on the 70s and 80s. And every single major uh, change that they they do uh, regarding uh, library decoration or architecture, it just makes a huge impact. And I see that there is a, a switch from the the view at, of the library as only a uh, collection collection things and and just a, 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 a switch from the collection to the to the experience of the user. And I think that those libraries, those brand new libraries, in a way, they just uh, attend the, the, the demands of the, the, what people want today in terms of services and products and even books. Those libraries cannot, could not stand uh, um, stick on the 70s like, like they were just uh, back in the, in the, in the, the past. So it's, it's nice to have those new libraries. And I see that most of them are just space and community oriented, and it's, it's a very, it's a very major switch from the model that we have, we've been having for for the last years, and the model that we had before. Okay, so let me just try to give you. Uh, I wanted to show you some some examples by by showing you some just some a few pictures of libraries, so you can get a glimpse of of what I'm trying to say here. I'll just. It's my first time using the Blackboard. Uh, I, 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 Steve was giving me a, a few tips um, before. What I'm trying to do now is to just give you a link so you can follow, just to see a few pictures. I will also put here on the, on the chat room. Um, let me see if this works. Um, just, as go, just as I go showing the, the slides, I wanted to, to show you also a few pictures. Uh, can, are you watching? Are you seeing? Let me let me just put here. Okay, great. Okay, all right. Okay, so you can just follow. Um, just to have, to have a glimpse of the libraries that I'm saying. Those new libraries you see here. Um, photos of libraries in São Paulo and libraries in Rio. I just picked up the most uh, appealing libraries, but uh, and and the most fancy ones, but those are libraries, public libraries, uh, school libraries, libraries in, in, in different uh, states. I'm trying to make like a database of new architecture projects uh, of libraries in Brazil. I can just send you all the pictures later. I also have a, a board on Pinterest uh, with all the public libraries uh, uh, in Brazil, the new ones, and you can, I can send you the link later. Let me just go back here. Hold on. <laughs> OK. Another project that I wanted to talk about is the park libraries. Uh, the park libraries, yeah, they're very impressive, Judy. Uh, it's, it's just amazing, yeah. It's, uh, the, another project is uh, the park libraries. Um, it's been functioning here in Rio. It's uh, it's uh, starting here in Rio as a new project. Uh, okay, I'll send it, I'll send you all the links there. And uh, uh, the, the idea behind the, the park library, which was a, a project very successful in Colombia and Rio, just copied the uh, copied that project, is to have the libraries in the favelas. 
which are um, the most impoverished uh, neighborhoods here in the cities. So they just uh, try to figure out which, which is the most uh, marginalized neighborhood that needs the most uh, a library as a space for uh, cultural and uh, educational intersection for the community. And then they're building those park libraries in those places. Uh, here in Rio, we, ha we have now four park libraries, and they are mainly and in, in totally community-driven. Uh, community has a lot of power managing the activities there. They they very they use very good the space that the library offers. Um, the project um, also encompasses high tech and broadband because. It's, it, that's exactly what most of those people in those neighborhoods miss the most. Uh, they, they usually don't have access to internet. They don't, they don't even have computers at their homes. So library is trying to bring, bring a social inclusion by means of, of digital inclusion, which is coming uh, very uh, related in, uh, in the sense of uh, uh, political public um, action. Architecture also plays a major role. I've seen many uh, architecture projects that focus mainly on how the community will experience the, the space, which is amazing. And I know there is a, there is a, a recent movement, movement in, in the United States about maker space and libraries, but we've been doing this uh, here ever since the Park Library is started. Uh, here in Rio, we have uh, an art maker space where People can use the, the library space to build their own clothes. They can share their knowledge, and they they do everything fashion related. They they build clothes. They they have fashion shows inside the libraries. They have uh, photo shoots of of modeling, and and everything. And not only that, but uh, they have um, studios, music studios where they can record their, their own music instead of not only they have the chance to, to download uh, MP3 music songs, like pretty much like Overdrive works in the US for ebooks. We have here that too and, and for music songs that you can download music songs. But they also provide a, a studio where uh, the kids can go inside and play the guitar and make their own sound and record their own uh, uh, MP3 and, and, and they just plug in a, a, a drive and they can take home their own music. So it's pretty much a, a maker space like in the US has been going around. I, I will show you another uh, link. I'll, I'll give you another link to the, to the park libraries. Just a second here. I will put on URL. Okay, so it's just, uh, again, a few pictures of the, of the park libraries. You can see the uh, you, you you'll not be able to see the environment because those those pictures are are from the inside inside view of the library, but uh, those libraries are pretty much inside the favelas and uh, you can see here uh, Manguinhos. You can all search on uh, on Google later for 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 those. Yeah, let me, let me just try to put here. So you can you can follow too. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you see here it's um, Hacinha, which is the biggest favela in, in South America, and Niterói. Many of these libraries, they were built from scratch, and uh, they all follow the, the, the main uh, idea behind the, the, the park library project, which is to be completely um, driven by the community. They use the space like they're an extension of their, their own houses. I just wanted to show you something very cool here. Uh, do you see a picture with uh, a bunch of faces? Uh, there is a, okay, uh, so you see those faces on the wall, stamped on the wall? Those are the faces 
from the, the, the local people, the people living in the community, and they call this my people room. Um, there is a, a just the same picture, uh, the last one, the last one at the bottom, you see the kids, the kids there building uh, musical instruments from garbage. And uh, that's the, the, the kind of the workshops that they have there, the training sessions, uh, not only databases and how to search on Google and use uh, uh, games, but they, um, but uh, they build things uh, with their own materials. Uh, for those uh, that there are seeing the pictures, the last one at the bottom, uh, uh, just take a look at the, there is a door at the uh, right side of the, the pick, the door. Um, Uh, this door, it opens from outside of the library, which means that even when the library is closed, people can go inside uh, to use that space, because that's the My People room. So the library has this particular room that's a half, a half inside the library and half outside the library, and people use it even when the library is closed. It usually, usually is closed on Mondays, and uh, people still have the right, and, and they just uh, use it like a, like I said like an extension of their own uh, public ha public spaces like an extension of their houses and everything. Okay, let me just go forward here because time short. Uh, I will go back to the to the slides. Okay. Another cool thing that I think that it might be shared it's the it's uh, the free libraries. We also have free libraries here. Like a bunch of free libraries are, are, are growing up in the U.S. Uh, ever uh, since the economic has going a, bit, a, a little bit shaky in the U.S. Uh, but here in, in Brazil, we also have a bunch of free libraries spread in the public parks and in all the major cities. They're uh, mostly uh, an idea uh, from the individual. Uh, they just seek to, to, to get the most uh, uh, the project running just the best they can. It's very low cost, but has a, a huge impact, high impact. And most of them promote their own projects on, on using social networks. And a few of those projects are, are funded by private. When they get uh, very, very good visibility, they, they, they usually get sponsored, and, and that's how they go. I want to show you, I'll just give you another link. So you can see the, the free libraries. OK, just one second real quick. OK, there you go. OK. OK, are you, are you, all, are you all? Seeing the pictures that I'm, that I'm putting online, I, I guess I, I feel you. Okay, all right. Yeah, pretty much, Stacy. Just we have a little, like just like the little free library, and uh, there are libraries. There are uh, just free libraries in the model of uh, pick one and leave one book uh, that they put on uh, bus stop huts. The first, the first pick is uh, is the mini free library. And uh, inside of someone's house, just they use the fence to, to make the, the base. The second pick is a, is a library in the, in the square, in the public square. And there is this guy, and uh, yeah, there is this guy with the bicycle, which uh, he used to be a homeless guy, and he felt uh, not very welcome using the public library. So he, he decided to, to create his own library. And, he he brings books in, in the in, in his bike and bicycle to the other homeless guys in São Paulo. That's that's São Paulo. And you see um, the bus huts that that becoming library. Yeah. And the last week is um, it's a project that's run by the Metro Transportation System. They have a library free library inside the metro stations and in the few bus terminals uh, he, he, um, in, in all the major cities. Um, all you have to do is just show an ID and you can take the, the book and, and just like a regular library. But this library are run by the metro and transportation system. 
Okay. Let's go back to the slides. Um, next thing is the community libraries. Um, Brazil has many more community libraries than official public libraries, which means that most officially public libraries are 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 funded by the government. They're they're they are run by the government, and community libraries are just those that are created by the community or a single person create that uh, by his own desire and he keeps running it and then they always are chasing for for more money and funding to keep the library running and they are very local they 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 make a a, a major important uh, they do a important work to be just where the government can can reach and uh, where government is absent they just play an important role in being there and providing the people with the books and, 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 and reading and everything and then the space. And it's very important that they create uh, this environment of social um, action. It's, it's pretty amazing how this works. There is a very large uh, network of, of community libraries here in Brazil. Let me show you again another uh, short uh, link with pics of community libraries so you can see uh, get a feel what I'm talking about here. So you have, uh, you have, you see community libraries from all different types and uh, thanks Steve. Okay, so uh, yeah, it, it doesn't look like a, a real library, but those are libraries and they're, they're very important to the people that lack the most the access. Um, Brazil is very large and yeah, and uh, the second pick, second pick is a, it's actually a boat. It's a, it's a boat library where the parents bring their kids and they have uh, storytelling on the boat while, while the boat travels around the lake. And, uh, and there are a bunch of projects like that. You see the, there is a, uh, the, last, the last pick on the bottom. It's, uh, it's almost like an Indian hut inside the, the region of, of Amazon, Amazon, Amazonia. And uh, it's pretty much it. Just to give you a glimpse of how different can be uh, a library, uh, an officially government-run library and a community library that uh, makes a, a very um, effort, big effort to, to provide people books and, 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 and a space to read and to have access to to information and everything. I'll just ask uh, if there are any Brazilians there. Just ha if you can uh, ask a few of the questions. If you know where you can you can answer for me, uh, uh, it will be uh, very helpful. Okay, let me go back to the slides. Arena, let's we'll go to. Uh, um, you want me to ask a question? Okay, did you call? Yeah, yeah. I'm just. Uh, uh, I can answer them, but just so I, I don't uh, get behind on the clock, so uh, maybe I can. Okay. I'll, I'll just give my email. So I mean, okay, okay. So let me go just to the digital libraries. Brazil is coming very strong with the projects with the digitizing collections. We have a bunch of, as I call, hidden treasures. A bunch of really good stuff that. Even ourselves, we don't even know what we have until they're open for for digitization. And uh, there is a rush, being rushing around just to digitize everything, to put those collections online. Uh, very hard, very hard work to do because uh, everything is starting from scratch. Infrastructure is very low here. Not many libraries have the the capacity. To, to put the, uh, their own collections online because they lack the, the equipment, the hardware, and even the, the labor skill to, to just put the, the collections online. So, but still we have a huge amount of collections. I think in the, in the upcoming years, we will see a bunch of, of Brazilian materials uh, filling the web. And uh, as a, like an advice that I, I keep giving here to the people just, uh, we're in, in the stage that we should put everything online as, as, as much as we can, as fast as we, as we can, and then we can create creating more uh, searchable databases and more friendly user interfaces with, within the digital library project. 
but I just believe that we have much more things to to show to the world that uh, but we still have to 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 do our homework uh, to to just bring those those materials uh, to everybody. Let me just uh, give you another uh, few session of of, of pics, uh, pictures here. Uh, digital a few uh, digital projects uh, worth mentioning, and uh, I actually worked a few a few years uh, with the National Library in partnership with Library of Congress and everything. Uh, we traded a lot of materials, which was uh, was good for both both parties. And uh, as we can see here, there's just the I just uh, I, I printed the the the, the home pages of those libraries just for you to have a, a glimpse of what we have here in terms of of user interface and and databases and the range of the projects you see um, we have um, photographs and manuscripts and, and maps we have a bunch of stuff that came from that came to Brazil from the Portuguese Empire. And that stayed here uh, even after the independence of the country. So we have a, a bunch of, of, of stuff that that is related with the Portuguese heritage, our own heritage. And you can see uh, just a few different projects here. I can give you all the links later for you to follow. I also have a board on Pinterest that I, I just put those images that I find most interesting about uh, our own stuff and I just keep pinning them and I'll, I can give you the, the, the link later. Okay. Let me just go back here to the slide. Okay. Now, how, how uh, are the librarians, Brazilian librarians doing regarding social media and social networks? I think we got really, really good. It's maybe our own culture explain the way that we are very, um, very good at communication with uh, with people, and uh, we got really good uh, in uh, interprofessional talking. Like we're when we're talking within uh, ourselves, we're really good, and it's 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 been amazing that we have. Groups and Facebooks with more than with a few thousand of librarians sharing stuff. It's a great way to 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 be aware of the news in the area. It's a great way to to build networking uh, relationships. Brazil, uh, it's a it's a huge country, so it's a great way to 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 put down the the restraints of geographic uh, and distance between cities. And social network it has been working great within the librarians group, but I think that we we really failed when we're trying to use uh, digital uh, any kind of social networks within the the library perspective, like a service, using social networks as service and projects uh, related to libraries. We didn't have much to show. Uh, there are a few good examples. A few libraries were really good at using. Facebook and Twitter and all major social networks to connect with users, but I think in the major part we fail on that. But we have been just pretty much really good, really good uh, using the networks within our own um, desires, uh, in between the talk, in between professionals. It's been pretty amazing. I can show you. I'll show you an example of how we are using Facebook here. Um, we are using Facebook mostly to, to connect and to talk with each other. And I'll just give you a, a link here. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're using a, a, a closed uh, restrict room, group on Facebook to exchange library articles and uh, academic articles. Those of us who work on, on, on universities and research institutes, we have um, each one of us has access to a few collection of databases, and like we have our our VPNs and and everything, so we use uh, Facebook, the groups on Facebook, to exchange uh, articles from databases that we don't have access. So you can see here, even even if you don't understand Portuguese, what you can see here on the Facebook, uh, the picture that that is shown here. Uh, 
I just put, um, I, it's, it's myself here on the top, I just put a, a, a reference of an article that I, that I was searching for and uh, I requested uh, publicly on, on the group and right, uh, 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 yeah, and right down under now, down there is, you see Marina, Marina just sent me the, the, the archive, the, the, the PDF, so I could download it. So Marina is working in Sao Paulo, I'm working in Rio, she has access to, to a few databases that I don't, so I just put the request online, and anyone that's, uh, that's able to, to attend my request, you just put the files online, and that's how we, we change, we, we exchange the articles. Uh, probably we're going uh, against a few uh, databases and, and editors' contracts, but uh, we're doing this for the, our users. And uh, it's just uh, an example of how we're using uh, social media here to, to make the work uh, better. Okay, so let me go back to the slide. I'm, I'm almost done, Steve. Uh, okay, lost. Uh, the Congress here just passed a few uh, interesting laws that I just wanted to share uh, with you. It's very hard for me to explain them in details, but it's just, um, as you can just read from the slides, you get a, to get a, a notion of what I'm trying to, to talk about. Uh, the Congress passed last year a, a law that states that we're, we have to, to provide full access to information regarding um, government, on um, documents and, and papers and, and everything that's related with the government uh, sphere, be it federal or, or state, and uh, everyone has now the right to just uh, access information which was not given before, and it was something that people were, were requesting ever since the, the military uh, regime uh, fell down in Brazil. And uh, it came big as, a, as, a, as this law, this bill that passed last year. Uh, another bill that's coming up that's actually already passed the Congress, but it's not, it's, you know, it's way to, to get effective. It's uh, to have a library in every educational institutional in, in, the, in the whole country, be it a small a school, kindergarten, or a major and big university library, any, any, educational space must have a library. And within that, we're trying to put a, 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 a professional or a, a, a technical librarian working in those libraries. So we're, what we're seeing is that there is a huge, there will be a huge demand for, for workforce uh, if that law is really uh, become really effective uh, because there are just much more uh, schools and, and educational institutions than, that, uh, than librarians in the working field. So we will have to adjust to, to that law in the upcoming years, and now we'll just see uh, how it goes, and, and I'll give you the updates. Okay, so um, regarding computer in libraries, there is a, a recent uh, statistics on, on the spread and the penetration of computers in libraries here, you see that only uh, about 35% of the libraries have computers, but out of that, only uh, about 30% are the ones that offer those computers as a, uh, as a public access, access uh, uh, system. So in most libraries, they have computers, but they use for internal services. Uh, they're not for, for uh, free online access to the, to the internet as a whole. And what is a major problem is that uh, usually people here are, uh, when they go to those public access, access uh, places, be either a library or a coffee house, which are very popular here, uh, but they, they do not seek information, uh, uh, so they, they just go there to communicate in the first place. And librarians are, are kind of worried about uh, people going to the libraries only to, to, to log in on Facebook and stuff like that, and most of them just block those, those social networks so people can only focus on the collections uh, rather than uh, surf online, which is something that I don't, I don't buy it. I have my own understanding of, of this, but uh, I'll just pass that so we don't have time to discuss this right now. 
But um, the other problem is that most uh, librarians and people working in libraries, they don't have any type of training as to providing uh, training sessions or workshops for people to work and uh, with them using the computers in libraries, and which is a major complaint here uh, within the library lib librarian community to have uh, a much more uh, expertise on how they can provide uh, a better training for their, their our own professionals and, and furthermore to the to the users. Okay, so a few problems that that we face. Um, Brazil is a very distinct uh, country. We are still seeing that uh, information technology is still for uh, a small elite. Uh, even though I showed before that we have a bunch of people spending a lot of time online and uh, and most uh, a lot of people connect on our on mobile phones and with 3G connections and broadband, but that's not everybody. It's, it's only for a small part of the population. It, it's just that those who have access, it's, they just become just such a have users, and, and they respond, respond for pretty much all the, the high usage that we see in the, it's, it's, it's in the stats. But um, let's just say that info, information technology is not for, still not for, for, for it's only for the elites, and that's just too bad. Uh, we have very low reading levels and habits. Every time we see in stats, it's, it's not good. It's not looking good, and uh, we are all um, worried about the how the, how can we help the things that we must do, and in conjunction with uh, educational system and libraries, to to make those reading levels um, become uh, be back again at, at good rates. But I think it's not uh, only a Brazil problem right now. Uh, we're facing the same problem in the U.S., I think, from the things that are, that are being written. Um, digital uh, division, it's, it's, it's the problematic that it, it just reflects the, the same division as we see in the social uh, sphere. And it's, it's pretty bad that, like I said, that, um, if technology is only for the, the upper class, it's not going to work out. Brazil is not going to develop and become a better place for everybody if only the, uh, if the technology reflects the, our social division. And we have to work hard on, on that. Um, government bu uh, bureaucracy is very, very hard. It, it kills, I say kills all because it just kills every um, motivation that we have to do better things and, and just the right stuff, but it's very hard to go against the, the constraints of the government. They're just very rigid system, and it's just hard to, to do things without following their own way to do things. Uh, education has not been a priority, which is bad, pretty bad, and let's go. Uh, okay, so just to, to finish here, what Brazil has to offer? Of course, there are a lot of things that Brazil may, may offer to the world. I just wanted to pick a few things that they are more library-related. And uh, I think that, above all, Brazil has a, a potential market, market for, for pretty much everything. If companies and, and industry and interest people just want to, to, to see Brazil as the place to invest and to open up market, I think doing the right, the right uh, uh, Planning just you can you can get much out of the uh, Brazilians as a potential market for for anything. Um, major librarian working force on the field because we have a lot of library schools here. We have a different system than the U.S. Uh, uh, providing uh, professional librarians to the field every every semester every year. A lot of them are just going in uh, the field as as the, the, the library schools are becoming more accessive, accessible to, to everybody, and uh, the, the profession is growing and everything, so we see a, a lot of people entering the field, which is, which is great, I think. Uh, social media expertise, because uh, a lot of us are really have users. We know how to use the, the technology, and I think we can um, just uh, become a, a really top of class here in, in, in understanding how social media works and, and how to do things with it. 
um, Portuguese language heritage because um, Brazil uh, it's 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 one of the few countries on, in the world that speaks Portuguese, but there are a lot of um, Brazilians, so we represent a very large uh, group of Portuguese spoken languages and, and all the materials that, that represent our heritage. We have all that to offer to the world. Like uh, I said, the digital libraries that are coming, uh, we have to focus on that. And a bunch of uh, youngsters, I, I just have a Myself, I'm, I'm just, I just became 30 years old, and I think uh, we have a lot of librarians who are under 30s who are just entering the field now, and they have uh, the, whole, the whole life for, for in front of them. So a lot of things that we can expect from the next uh, years, and I hope uh, they, they do a, a good job in, in offering, uh, making clear what Brazil has to offer to the world. So it's pretty much about it. The time is running. I wanted to thank everybody, obrigado, in, in Portuguese. And you can follow my links. That, that's on Facebook and, and my, my website. Uh, you can find my email there. And I hope, I hope that it was, it, I just wanted to thank you all again. And thank you, Steve, for having the, for giving me the chance to participate in this awesome conference. I'm just glad that, that I, I, I was part of it. So if you have any questions, just just put it up. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Miranda. There was a question I saw in the chat, and there may have been more than one. But one question was, are there so many different kinds of unofficial libraries because the government has been unable to provide for these communities? Yeah, okay. So we have we have library schools here, and uh, there is a, a, an agreement that only reg, regular librarians should work in libraries. And there is a it's it's very complicated to to explain in details, but of course it's there are much more uh, workplaces than there are librarians. So what they do is in in smaller cities, in smaller cities with smaller libraries, they just put someone. Uh, there, there is technical, technically trained to, to be a, a, a supervisor, not a librarian, but a supervisor of the library, someone who is, who is going to run the library. But if you go check on the major libraries, the, the university library systems and uh, the governmental institutions that have uh, libraries on their, on their working role, they're all uh, I would say professional and, and regulated librarians. So we have we have a strong um, marketing of regular librarians working at the major cities, but very few librarians working within the the inner areas and rural uh, areas. So there is a, a gap there. Are you seeing the question about okay. Brazil as a potential market for digital databases? Yeah, Let me see. yeah, Isabella. Okay, yeah, there is. Like I said, there is a in Brazil. There is a, a potential for everything. We are. We have a, a, a specific. Brazil has a, a unique type of con consortium uh, regarding databases contracts. What happens is that the government, the federal government, they pay a huge amount of money to the major databases provider. Providers like Elsevier and uh, all those that you know, and uh, Brazil, the government pays a huge amount of money to have the, the access to those uh, major databases, and then the government uh, spread those the, the access to to the uh, public institutional, educational institutional, and researchers, and via VPNs and stuff like that proxies. And that's how they're doing things here. But so there is a there is a market, of course, to to databases. If you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat, or you can raise your hand. That's the third icon over the hand icon. I was interested in the growth and the building of libraries. We had um, representative from Shanghai speak earlier today. And they also saw right. this very rapid growth in libraries. But the United States has probably seen the opposite. Is, it, is there any kind of a connection or pattern that would be worth 
noting with regard to the building of libraries and, yeah. and uh, culture? Well, I just yeah, I, I just think it's it's very related to the economic um, position that we're we're just having within our the, those countries that um, you mentioned, um, South Korea. Um, I, I think they're investing very ha very hard uh, on on libraries. I think it's just a reflection of how the economic is, is going here. Brazil, and in the last decade, has been very uh, steady on economic growth, and that enabled uh, the government to invest much more in libraries. Because uh, not only libraries, but in the in the educational system and the cultural system as a as a whole, because that is the it's a major um, thing for for development uh, of the country. And I think the only pattern that I can see very clearly is that um, as far as, as the U.S. is going in the opposite direction, this is only because of how the economic is, is going. So I'm curious. By the, time, by, the time you, by the time the U.S. were, were very um, great with, with public libraries in the 80s and the 70s and in the 90s, Brazil was doing really bad. So I think it's, it's our time here to pick up stuff and uh, to running after the, all those wasted years that we have we had before. I wonder if there's also another connection between uh, perceptions of teaching and learning. Certainly in the United States, we've moved much more toward high stakes testing. But you've always had high stakes testing in Brazil. Does the yeah. library represent a more popular view of learning? Um, it, do, you, do you have a perception? In amongst Brazilians, that the library is a good place for learning. Yeah, I think that 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 aspect is only come out coming um, within the university community of students, not within the the lower uh, and basic educational uh, for the the kids and 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 middle middle school. Um, it, it, they still think the library is a place there where they just have to go to to copy and paste and to do the homework, and they don't see it like an any an enthusiastic place to be. I mean, the kids, kids in general. But for the people that are in the university, I think they see library much more as a, as one of the resources that will make a difference in their own future and in when they enter the the competitive uh, field, their, their working field. I see that uh, my library, the, the library that, that I work, uh, it's it's even each day uh, more and more packed. But of course, it's the, the students there are not uh, reaching the books anymore. They just they fight for power outlets. They bring their own laptops and, and iPads, and they are working together. So I just I think that the major uh, change in, in library is it's actually the space. They are not very after um, after the books anymore. They can find the books anywhere on, on Google. Let's say. And they're, but they are using more the library as a space, as a public space. So we've also heard a couple of times, especially, um, especially from China as well, about using the library for lectures, for book group meetings, and that kind of thing. Are you seeing a similar push? Yeah. Yeah, in public li like the ones that I showed the, the pictures, the public libraries in, in Sao Paulo, they have uh, just a very uh, wide range of activities um, being held there. For everything you, you imagine that could be uh, worked in the library, they do in Sao Paulo and a few libraries in Rio and, and the South, Porto Alegre. Um, a bunch of things have been going uh, on on those, on those libraries. But I still think that... Um, a few libraries concentrate most of the efforts. You see those brand new libraries or the major public libraries in the big cities. They do a bunch of, of works and, and very great projects and attractions. But it's very concentrated on, on, concentrated on, on those libraries. But uh, as far as those libraries go, you can, you can just pick any, any kind of activity that you want and they I'm sure they, they provide it in some kind of way or another. Marana, thanks so much. I think we probably need to wrap up now. 
Okay, Steve, thank you so much. I just, um, it was amazing. Thank you, thank you so all. Thank thanks you very much. Thanks, Moreno. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being a part of this conference. We've really had a, a blast. It's hard to believe it's coming to a close in just a couple of hours. But we're going to let you go so you have time to go to the next set of sessions. Then we have another keynote, our final keynote, which is um, in just about an hour from now. Take care, everybody. Good night or good day, depending where you are. Ciao. Ciao, Moreno. Obrigado.